Hello everybody and thank you for joining. I am Marco De Angeli, Director of Innovation at Flex. Designing a smart syringe is not easy. Our engineering team went through a full design iteration to anticipate which are the major pitfalls and derive lessons learned that I'm here to share with you today. The key point that we are trying to solve here is protocol non-adherence and the fact that up to 50% of users are not following exactly what has been prescribed. This is a result uh, is uh, leading to higher hospitalization costs, less effective uh, therapies, and of course, higher insurance costs. Adding this layer of intelligence uh, to a medical device can be easy if we are talking about a complex one like an auto injector or a wearable pump. And it becomes more challenging if we want to address it for a passive syringe or a mechanical injector pen. Flex decided to work on this last uh, and simple uh, device to anticipate the time for our customers and derive some useful learning to speed up the time to market in the next iteration. So let's have a look now at the five major pitfalls and recommendations we may have when designing a smart syringe. Number one, do not focus on the system architecture of your product. It's important to have a system engineering team connecting together the hardware design team, the software design team, the mechanical design team, and the user experience team all together to understand at the beginning which are the product requirements, what are the risks associated behind, and how to manage the overall selection of the key components, pairing them with the right supply base to ensure a complete transition to manufacturing later on. To achieve an efficient system engineering, you need to bring into the table several subject matter experts and take care of all the major aspects from the sensor technology that is used to uh, derive the end of dose or deliver the dose in the syringe to the connectivity aspects or to the software that is needed to process the data locally and combine it with a good mechanical design keeping track of all the tolerances uh, and uh, needs from uh, a manufacturing standpoint. Pitfall number two, underestimate the amount of effort required to create a good connection. RF connectivity requires uh, simulations. You need to take care of the hand, of the battery, the scale factor that is uh, very small, and all the other things that can affect the radiation pattern of the antenna in such a small device. This becomes even more important if you plan to change the ceramic antenna and save some sense in your bill of material and replace this antenna with a custom made one uh, made with a sheet metal on the PCB. Of course, this is a good idea to lower the cost of the device, but indeed brings you more challenging and more time needed at design stage to tune the antenna shape, the antenna position and the surrounding objects around. We need to ensure that the link to the smartphone is still reliable even in these conditions. Pitfall number three, not enough focus on the battery interface. It's true that the battery can be an off-the-shelf component, but is connected to the electronics, typically with a custom battery cage. The contact itself needs to be designed properly to avoid the buildup of oxides that will result in intermittent failures of, in the device. Second point, do not forget about the passivation of the battery. The source of battery passivation is electrochemical. It's the buildup of an isolation layer that prevents the discharge of the battery when the battery is not used. But at the same time, when the battery is inserted in the electronics, with the new processors that nowadays are requesting less and less current when in deep sleep mode, keeps the battery passivation going. So it's important that you address this from a product strategy standpoint, understanding how you can turn on again the device after two or three years of shelf life. Pitfall number four, too late addressing manufacturing requirements. It's important that from the first early days of design, you focus also on how the device will be assembled, possibly in an automated way, how the device will be tested and calibrated with a, such a small form factor, and consider other elements like the 
sterilization strategy that can exclude some methods due to the presence now of electronics inside the device, or even thinking about all the software that is needed to calibrate and operate the device in the factory. Typically, this may end up uh, absorbing up to one third of the entire memory footprint and requires you at the end to change the silicon in the device, adopting a, one that is more expensive and with a, a wider memory footprint. Pitfall number five, do not have an holistic approach on the entire life cycle of a device. You need to focus also on what is going on during the transportation, maybe with severe environmental conditions, down to the back end where the device is uh, thrown away and you need to address some recyclability and waste management. Other key point uh, is the focus on the end user, understanding exactly what they plan to do with the device in specific conditions and uh, what are the typical behaviors that the user can put into play and create a specific uh, misuses of the device and plan for that in the features of the device itself. So let me summarize this lesson learned into five best practices. Number one, you need to have a, a strong system engineering team, a pool of subject matter experts able to cover the different disciplines from electrical design, mechanical design, firmware coding, and manufacturability. Second, you need to have a good, uh, solid supply base, a network of pre-approved vendors and pre-qualified vendors able to support you from the early days of fast prototyping down to very high volume production. Spend some time also in qualifying and identifying and qualifying second sources as much as possible to prevent shortages. Third point, focus on some specific items in your smart syringe design that are critical, the battery selection, the antenna, the firmware footprint, especially from services that are defined later like manufacturing test services and security safety services. And finally, mechanical design and all the tolerances, how they are kept under control from a mechanical standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, and how the tolerance take up is built up. Number four, engage manufacturing engineers uh, at the beginning of a cycle, understanding everything that can may be needed later on in production, from a testability, assembly viewpoint, sterilization, and so on. And finally, keep an holistic view on the entire product life cycle, thinking about the environmental condition during transportation, what can happen to the electronics and to the liquid in the syringe, down to when the syringe is thrown away and you maybe you need to dismantle the electronics and the battery to be compliant to recycling requirements. And keep an eye on the user and understand really how the user will interface with your product with specific, that specific drug and manage it properly in the design phase. Rigel is the internal code name for this smart pen project and uh, is about uh, um, Make electromechanical add-on that can be snapped onto a, a pure mechanical syringe to create connectivity. Connectivity that can be achieved with a very low cost solution based on NFC technology or something uh, more complex with a BLE connectivity and a connection to an app and to the, the cloud system. Let's have a look how it works. So the first activity that the user has to do with the BLE solution is to set up the device. This is an important step that you need to keep in mind. Even if it is a disposable solution, you need uh, always to pair via BLE the device uh, with, a, with a smartphone. This can be done in different ways with QR codes or NFC tags. There are several ways to accomplish this function. And once the pen is uh, connected to the app, then you can use also the app to uh, turn on specific notifications and uh, ensure that uh, there is a reminder set up at the right point in time and this will uh, enable a better adherence to the prescribed the time of injection. Then when the user is um, ready to inject and is just uh, using the device, uh, activating the button at the end of injection uh, is transferred as an event to the app and this is stored in the local memory of the smartphone and then can be used also later on to be transferred to the cloud for uh, further logging. Thank you for your attention and for any questions feel free to email us at healthsolutions at flex.com.
Thank you.